Hello everyone, I welcome you all for the second session of the chapter Electromagnetic Waves. In our previous session, we have learned about what is electromagnetic wave and how does it propagates in space. So as you know that electromagnetic waves are the sinusoidal variation of electric and magnetic field and they are coupled together and they propagate in the form of electromagnetic waves. That is what the definition for the electromagnetic wave. Then we studied about what are the sources that produces the electromagnetic wave. The sources that can produce an electromagnetic wave is a oscillating charge or an accelerated charge. Correct? So we had given some examples for oscillating and accelerated charges in our previous session. Then what are the characteristics or the nature of electromagnetic waves? So we had studied some of the characteristics like what is the speed of the electromagnetic wave in a free space and also in a medium. Then what nature does the electromagnetic wave possess? It, is a, it has a transverse nature, you know that. And then we had learnt about the uh, light, what is light vector and what is the radiation pressure likewise. So we had studied about the properties and nature of electromagnetic waves in the previous class. In this class, what we are learning is about the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum consists of uh, seven different electromagnetic waves. So let us write the names of the electromagnetic waves. So what are the waves in electromagnetic spectrum? So that we have to write. So we will write here radiation. Radiation is nothing but electromagnetic wave. And what we are writing together is what is the wavelength of these radiations and also its frequency. So depending on the ranges of wavelength and frequency, we are going to differentiate the electromagnetic waves into seven categories. So let us write it one by one. The first one. So we are now writing in the increasing order of wavelength and decreasing order of frequency. Okay, increasing order of wavelength and decreasing order of frequency. The first radiation here is a gamma rays. Gamma rays. This is the first one. Secondly, we have X rays. We have X rays. Third one, ultraviolet rays which are commonly called UV rays. Fourth one, visible light. Fifth one, infrared rays which are commonly called IR rays. And the sixth one is microwaves. And lastly, we have radio waves. Yes, these are the seven different electromagnetic waves in an electromagnetic spectrum. So these waves are differentiated on the basis of their wavelength range and frequency range. Okay. So the wavelength range of these rays are written in the increasing order and the frequency in a decreasing order. Now let us write what are the wavelength ranges of these radiations. So we will write it one by one here. The wavelength range of these radiations and this is in a increasing order. So we will write it one by one. See these are the different ranges of wavelength of the radiations or electromagnetic radiations. So the wavelength range of gamma rays is lying between 6 into 10 power minus 13 to 1 into 10 power minus 10 meter. That is the wavelength range of gamma rays. Similarly for X-rays it is 1 into 10 power minus 10 to 3 into 10 power minus 8 meter. Then for UV rays 3 into 10 power minus 8 to 4 into 10 power minus 7. Then for visible light 4 into 10 power minus 7 to 8 into 10 power minus 7. And for IR rays 8 into 10 power minus 7 to 3 into 10 power minus 5. For microwaves it is 1 into 10 power minus 3 to 3 into 10 power minus 1. And finally for radio waves 0.3 to 6 into 10 power 2 meter. 
So if you observe the wavelength ranges of this radiation, radio waves are having a longest range of wavelength and also radio waves is having a longest wavelength among these radiations, correct? Because this is the increasing order of wavelength, that is why gamma rays are having a shortest wavelength, okay? Gamma rays are having a shortest wavelength and radio waves are having a largest wavelength, okay? Yes, now let us write the uh, frequency, the ranges of frequency for these radiations which is in a decreasing order, okay. If the wavelength is in increasing order, then the frequency must be in decreasing order because they are inversely proportional. Let us write the frequency ranges now. Now, if we observe the ranges of frequencies of this radiation, for gamma rays, the frequency range. For X-rays, it is 3 into 10 power 19 to 1 into 10 power 19. For UV rays, 1 into 10 power 16 to 8 into 10 power 14. For visible light, 8 into 10 power 14 to 4 into 10 power 14. For infrared rays, 4 into 10 power 14 to 1 into 10 power 13. For microwaves, 3 into 10 power 11 to 1 into 10 power 9. And for radio waves, 10 power 9 to 5 into 10 power 5. Hertz. So, this is the decreasing order of frequency. So, from gamma rays to radio waves, if we go, so this is the decreasing order of frequency. So, by observing this, you can say that gamma rays are having a largest frequency. Okay, Frequency is more for the gamma rays and it is lesser for radio waves. Okay, So, if you write the energy of an electromagnetic wave, energy of an electromagnetic wave which is directly proportional to the frequency. So, this one gamma rays is having a highest frequency that is why these are very energetic rays. Okay, Gamma rays are most energetic rays among the electromagnetic waves because this is having a highest frequency. So, this is about the electromagnetic spectrum. In an electromagnetic spectrum, we have seven different electromagnetic waves. So, their classification is done on the basis of the ranges of wavelength or frequency. Okay. Gamma rays are called as most energetic radiations among the seven different rays. So, now we will move on to the next topic which is nothing but the production and uses of electromagnetic waves. And this type of question is very important for you because if you observe your question paper, in your question paper, you may have a two mark question on the basis of this. Like write the uses of microwaves, write the uses of ultraviolet rays, write the uses of X-rays or microwaves. Likewise, the question will be asked for two marks. That is why this topic is very important for you. Listen to this very carefully. Okay, right. Firstly, let us write for radio waves. The production and uses of radio waves. So, radio waves are produced due to the electric, electrical oscillations of, electrical oscillations of, electrical oscillations of a charge in a circuit containing inductance and capacitance yes so if we ask what is the source of this radio waves so how does radio waves are produced so radio waves are produced due to the electrical oscillations of a charge in a circuit containing inductance and capacitance. So, LC oscillations. You have learned this in your uh, previous chapter. So, LC oscillations. So, these radio waves are produced due to the electrical oscillations of a charge in a circuit which is containing inductance and capacitance. Now, let us read what are the uses of these radio waves. Okay. Yeah. So, radio waves are mainly used in the radio communication and telecommunications okay so these ra these waves radio waves are mainly used for the communication purpose like in fm broadcasting 
So these waves are mainly used in telecommunication or simply a communication purpose. Next we will write the microwaves about the microwaves. The microwaves are produced by the electrical oscillations produced in a circuit containing inductance and capacitance. Okay. So these waves, microwaves are also produced due to the LC oscillations. Now let us read what are the uses of microwaves. You have to note down this. Microwaves are used in aircraft navigation. Okay. In aircraft navigation, the microwaves are used. Next, in radar communication. So in radar system, which is used to find the speed of a vehicles, then to find the speed of fast moving tennis or cricket ball. So you may observe in a cricket match, the speed of the ball bowled by a bowler will be shown. So how we can find that speed? This is a application of this microwave only. Next, microwave ovens used in a baking system which is used to heat the food containing water. So that is also an application of a microwave only. Next, we'll move on to the infrared rays, okay, IR rays. The production of infrared rays, so which is, the, which is nothing but a hot bodies. So any hot bodies can emit the infrared rays. So these infrared rays are also called heat waves. Okay, these are called heat waves. So that is why these waves are produced by hot bodies. Okay. So these waves are produced due to the temperature of the body. Okay. Now let us read the uses of infrared rays and you can make, make a note of it. Infrared rays are used for cooking, heating and drying. Okay. So these are heat waves that is why they are used for cooking and also for drying. So they are used for producing a dehydrated fruits. Next. They are used by earth satellites to detect the healthy crops. Okay. Then which is used for a photography during fog and mist. Then to treat the muscular strain and also in TV remote control systems. Okay. So these are the main uses of infrared rays. Next we will write for visible light. So visible light is produced due to the electron transition in an atom. Okay an atom when electron takes a transition from one energy level to the another energy level so it emits the visible light so that is the production of elect uh, production of visible light and then what are the uses of vis visible light visible light is used in photosynthesis in case of plants so so these visible light is responsible for the photosynthesis in plants and to see the world around us so our eye is sensitive for the visible light that is why only when there is a visible light, we can see the things around us. Now we will move on to the next one, ultraviolet rays, ultraviolet rays, UV rays. So these are produced, these rays are produced by a very hot bodies. like sun okay so these electro these ultraviolet rays are mainly produced in a very hot bodies like uh, sun and other stars so they emit the ultraviolet rays and this ultraviolet rays can also produce it by electric sparks mercury vapor lamp etc. Well, so these ultraviolet rays or UV rays are produced by a very hot bodies like sun and other stars and they can also produce it by these electric sparks and mercury vapor lamps. Okay. Now let us read the uses of ultraviolet rays. So you can make a note of this. Ultraviolet rays are used to check the mineral samples then which are used to kill the gems in drinking water. Next, they are used to sterilize the surgical instruments and also to sterilize the milk. Okay, so these are the uses of ultraviolet rays. Now, let us write for the next one X rays. X rays are produced by, they are produced by a fast moving electrons. 
fast moving electrons hits by a metal target yes so x rays are produced by a fast moving electrons which are hit by a metal target so when these fast moving electrons hits a metal target then they will be decelerated and it which produces the x rays so this is how x rays are produced now let us read the uses of these x rays you can make a note of it x rays are used to produce the picture of the internal organs of the body and also when there is a crack or breakage in our bone so that can be studied using a x rays only next to detect the cracks and flaws in metals to study the crystal structure and also to destroy the cancerous cells in human body so these are the main uses of x rays now we'll move on to the next one gamma rays gamma rays are produced by nuclear reactions nuclear reactions or radio active elements these gamma rays are produced by nuclear reactions and also some radioactive elements emits the gamma rays so this is the production next let us read the uses of gamma rays and you can make a note of it so gamma rays are used to kill the cancerous cells and also they are used to find the cracks and flaws in metals so this is the uses of gamma rays well in this class what are the things we have learned firstly about the electromagnetic spectrum so in an electromagnetic spectrum we have seven different radiations or electromagnetic waves so the classification of these radiations are done on the basis of wavelength range and frequency range and also the method of production of those waves and then we learned about the production and the uses of those electromagnetic waves so we have learnt about radio waves micro waves infrared rays visible light ultraviolet rays x rays and gamma rays so from the examination point of view you have to learn about these waves and the uses and production of these waves very correctly and the two the four rays which are very important for you micro waves infrared rays uv rays x rays so they are very important for you and that's all for from this chapter so i have already explained you that this chapter contains three marks so a two mark question may be arised from this topic the uses of electromagnetic waves and that's all for this chapter and that's all for this session and we'll meet in the next session thank you